Welcome everybody to another episode of Muddy Roots. Mm-hmm. We are your hosts, uh-huh, Ryan, honey. Bill, Gage, and I am Rob. <laughs> let's dive into this. Uh, let's take a let's take, take a cup first. You know? Yeah, let's take a first cup. Take a cup first. Oh, both would be right. Yeah, you're right. I was just overthinking it. You know, uh, was something that I was like diving into. What's up? Was uh, sleep paralysis because uh, I was wondering why they call them sleep paralysis demons, and I guess like sleep paralysis dates way back then, where like you had no uh, internet or anything, anything to search up like Google and all that shit. But people in like Japan and Newfoundland, they uh, experienced seeing the same people. Wait, what is sleep paralysis again? So, Vilt actually talks about it yeah. in mental health episode. It's yeah, mental health. Oh. Episode. It's where you uh, you kind of wake up. I don't know if you actually wake up or you whatever, but you have paralysis or you're just stiff, can't oh. move. You can look around, but you can't move at all. And it, it was crazy because so there's like, bless you. There's like um. Four common demons that they see. One of them is hands. Is the feeling of like people grabbing you. What the fuck? Another one is called the old hag. And it's just a girl that like either comes up to you or like crawls on the on the ceiling. Yeah. And then there's one called the watcher. And he just stays in your room and just watches you. And you could feel it like this eerie thing. But like. Japanese people, they have like different words for the for like these, uh, this group, and like Newfoundland has one, but it's like all of these people see the same thing without like communicating, you know, like, and so that's that's why they call it sleep paralysis demon. Mm-hmm. Is like they think it's like actual people, or actual demons. So you said that there's four of them, yeah. There's four common ones, and those are the common ones. There's the hands, hands the old hag. Old hag. Watcher, and then uh, this one is the gargoyle. That's the fourth one. That one, and that scary. one is actually moted. Like at least the picture I saw was a, a guy, like a deformed creature, and he just sits on your, or like yeah, sits on your chest. Like he just sits there, and I guess people say that, like that one's scary as hell. What do you mean it's moted? Is the picture the picture? Just had a dude with like a huge head, skinny ass body, and he was just like, like sitting on a dude's chest. But like, I guess when that happens, like you, it's hard to breathe and everything. Like, you see him. Crazy thing. That's crazy. The hands is one. Yeah, I didn't know that. I got the chills when I saw that. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I didn't know that going into that episode. Like, I I was actually just speaking from experience. Experience, and I didn't know that was a. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I know. I, I I got the chills. So I was like, dude, damn. Yeah, holy. I've had sleep paralysis once, and it's so moted because I saw the grudge, and she was crawling on the ceiling. And so when I saw like, um, people talking about the old hag, I was like, dude, I literally saw her. Except she looked like the grudge. Like, you told me about that story. Yeah. Because in your sleep, you said you could feel the hair. Yeah, in your face. and that was so fucking scary. But it's just moted because it was like from a movie, and I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. But if a lot of other people have it, which maybe the grudge was based off of that. Yeah. Oh. Or Insidious is it Insidious where homie crawls and he's like peeked up in a corner during one of the scenes? I think so. Insidious is such a good uh, movie. Insidious one and two, I love that shit. Didn't they, they come out with the third one or something. Um. I think they have like three, four, five out. Holy shit, I didn't know that. But the first and second one, they tie the second movie, they tie it in with the first. So oh. it's like shit you can see in the first where you're like, holy shit, that's them. It's it's crazy. I do not like talking about like demons and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe it's like a superstitious thing. I know some ones are like this on the island at least, but I'm very weird with that kind of stuff i do not like talking about it because i feel like it almost invites that kind of uh, energy energy yeah 
I do not like that stuff. Have you guys ever felt that though, or no? Because that's definitely a Polynesian thing to be like superstitious about ghosts, about spirits, about mm-hmm. demons and stuff. But no. When it comes to like inviting energy, the superstition I believe in is don't sleep with the window open. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've heard that one. But I don't know if that's like a Polynesian thing or if it's at like universal, but. What is that one? It's just if you sleep with the window open, you're inviting literally like bad energy or like demons or ghosts into your house. I don't really necessarily have any superstitions that way. Like even seeing a black cat late at night and stuff like that or walking underneath the ladder. Never stuff like that. Even with ghosts and stuff. It's more just the talking about it for me. I don't I just do not like talking about it. Which I'm okay yeah. to talk about right now, but I remember I had friends in high school who did the the Ouija board. I've done the Ouija board. No, you are going to hell. And then we've also played that that game. That, game. Salt that shit was <sighs> so scary. That what? Did, that did scare me. That night was just a blur. Yeah. Well, okay, explain the game of salt <clears throat> real quick. So it was you had a pile like of rocks um and then what was it like a candle nearby salt around the in the circle yeah candle in the circle in the circle and then salt around it but then you play this game so you have someone be the medium and you play this game where you're asking whoever's around questions and then you flip the card and i think it was like it had to be a yes or no question yeah and i think it was like um a heart was a yes. Spade is a no. Diamonds is like maybe. And then clubs is I don't know. But yeah, dude, we that shit. I I heavily believe the in. trippiest thing that happened that when we were doing that was um, we we're in the garage doing it and the freaking candle was flickering. But we we're getting answers to a question and we had a stereo, oh just a stand up stereo scary. in our garage that was broken that. For years, like no one used it, it just didn't work. And after one of the questions, that thing just started blaring music, and we all yeah. took off running out of the garage except for one of the dudes that was there. It but was, that thing was broken. Oh, what the frick! Another thing yeah. that was scary was uh, oh. so we we play with it, we potentially get like someone you know on the other side. We're actually dumbasses because so you salt off like barriers where you don't want them in, right? We salted off the door to the house, house. but our dumbasses salted off the garage too. <laughs> and so it was like their only way in was the front door. <laughs> like it was it was so emoted. But um oh, the scary yeah. thing was we all get scared. We run inside and your mom's sleeping on the couch and in her sleep she said she's coming. Oh, it was, it was no. so bad. Chun was upstairs and she didn't know we we're doing anything stupid. And she said that she saw a black figure look into her room and darts down. Oh, that's where I get, that's where I get the chills. Yeah. And she didn't know. And so she screams. She comes downstairs. And then, <sighs> like, I already went home. I had to come back. And Wait, she wasn't in the garage with y'all? No. No. That's the scariest oh, thing. Was, yeah. We had to call our home teachers to come bless the house. Yeah. Oh, they hell they yeah. blessed yeah, the yeah. house and blessed everyone. Yeah. But it, it was scary. Oh. Um, when we're walking home right after that, so this is like a two day thing. Yeah. In the dark. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like a five minute walk. It was it was pretty short. But um this happened in two days. The first day we didn't say goodbye to it. So it's just following us. That's when I have the sleep paralysis demon. Like that's when I felt the hair and everything. And we actually take a photo at the end of I think the first day, and there was like I, and to me, it looked like two red eyes behind me. And before we played that game, I was the only one that played Bloody Mary. Yeah. Dude, Don't do that. Yeah. You played Bloody Mary in the bathroom. No, we played this weird rendition of the game, like where it's like you stick your arms up, you say Bloody Mary, and then you like spin. And I was the only one that did that. But nothing came out of it except for that picture and then the, the hairs in my face. But... Oh, back to what I was saying. We're walking home. <laughs> Just and, a side note. Yeah. Frick to your story. <laughs> when I was wa- when we were walking home, there was like thirty cats outside, and they were like jumping on garbage cans, like meowing loud as fuck. 
like the loudest the loudest meal it was so scary and it was only on gauges street and when i like turn left nothing there's like no one around i actually hate that stuff yeah i hate those stories because it gives me goosebumps gives me like chills yeah we definitely got in contact with something after that i like grew up not believing in like spirits and stuff like that until these guys would like bring up that one night and then they just Okay, yeah, I believe it. Damn. But that, st- mm-hmm. that stereo, that was... Wait, you said one homie stayed, though. Yeah. Yeah. He's built different. What's up with Dude, that? He was guy? like that. He, he was... Uh, my honest opinion was that he was the most spiritual and, re- and religious person out of the group. He he oh. stood up and just turned off the stereo and then walked out. Like, yeah. all of us stood up and ran. Oh, that homie had the power of God in like, him. That's yeah. just my opinion, though, because I was scared. Then your mom said she's coming. Jade's upstairs seeing She's the, stuff. Yeah. I can't believe y'all. That is actually great. Take a cut for that. Yeah, let's do uh, that. Yeah, when we came back was, uh, when we came back to the house, my heart is I had hurting. no idea what the frick was going on. And I see Pilo over there standing with another guy holding, like, scripture, mm-hmm. the, the Book of Mormon. I'm like, dude, what the heck is going on? And then we all sit down. Blesses us, and I'm like, wait, this was at Pila's house. This is at, at my house. I lived oh. right next to him because Pila yeah. was. He was our home teacher. Yeah, he was just right in the middle oh, of both really? of us. Yeah, I was oh, so confused. So until you lived right by his house on the corner. Yeah, okay. we lived in those apartments right behind that seminary building at Pineview. I know exactly which one. Yeah. No, what what confused me was, so, first off. I go home, I'm sleeping. Toa sneaks into my house. You like, I don't know how he got in, but he wakes me up in my room and he was like, We gotta go back to gauges. And I was like, okay. We go back to gauges to get blessed. But they only blessed Chun. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck what happened? What about us? I even had a buddy who his son said he had friends at night and was talking to people in his room at night. If that was happening to me, I'd be freaking out. Yeah. I do not like play around because I do think there's good spirits. Like, like we kind of talked in the mental health episode, mm-hmm. but I just don't want to risk it. Yeah, at all. Yeah, Crazy. but we did it, and it was not fun. I'm not gonna lie. I was in. There's an abandoned school out where I grew up in Neola, Utah. Look it up. But there's an abandoned school. It's actually a trailer. And we did it there, but I wasn't touching nothing. I was walking around, but I just don't know if they weren't taking it very serious because they all just thought it was a big joke Mm -hmm. or we didn't do enough research, but nothing really happened, honestly, but I do not like to even play around with that stuff. Yeah. I've I've only done the Ouija board twice. First time we, I swear we came in contact. Uh, it could have been my cousins just fucking around and like moving the board. moving the board, but we play with it, and we're like in middle school, so we made like we made the Ouija board out of a piece of paper, and then this ring, and we like are trying to contact someone, and we get in contact with this little girl named Isabella, right, and then <clears throat> we're like okay, like goodbye and everything. We go inside, and all the clocks in the kitchen started going backwards. And we start freaking out. We're crying, and we're like, dude, we're freaking stupid. <laughs> yeah. And then in the oh. back of my head, when that shit happened with the the hair in my face, I thought it was Isabella. Mm. I, like, fully believe that she is still, like, around me. That's two encounters that I was like, oh, shit, this is scary. Like It's real. Yeah. Definitely real. 100%. You guys are sitting right. over there pretty quiet. You guys got any other stories? No. Nope. Supernatural stories? Yeah. No. Okay. Any other story? <laughs> 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 the only ones I really have is actually my dad's stories back on the island in Tonga. Do you guys, did you guys' dad or mom ha- ever have any stories? Yeah. Are your parents from yeah. Samoa? No, they're from California. Oh. My dad's dad's from Samoa. Oh, okay. But you guys' parents are from Samoa. Mm-hmm. Did they have any stories like that? I've heard a couple. I don't think there I was, can remember. Yeah, there was a couple. One of them is like, um, so there's two of them. 
One of them was good. One of them was bad. The bad one was like whistling at night. Yeah. So my uncle would do that. Yeah. He would whistle it, whistle at night in the cemetery. And he said that he, I guess he was walking the streets. He was at a, um, I think he was visiting his aunt or something. And he was whistling. My aunt looked at him and like slapped him. And so when they walked back to the house, he was just like seeing these like figures, lights were turning off and shit like that. The other one was, uh, there's this, um, a story in Vaitongi. It's called the, uh, uh, the turtle, turtle and the shark. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, I forget what the story is. I think they like, they like fell in love with each other. They had to move away. Or they were chased out or something like that. So they sacrificed themselves. Um, kind of like jumped in the water because they wanted to be forever. The man turned into a shark. The the mom turned into a turtle. And so they said that there's this thing going around that if you go to, to that certain um, cliff and you sing a certain song, the more you sing it, the more you'll see, you're, like you'll see the turtle and the shark. And there's a video on YouTube that they sat there and they sang for like hours and they could only, f the turtle was the only one that popped up. I didn't see the, the shark. I've, I've heard those too, yeah. I hate those. Uh, so my dad has a story. So he obviously was a little kid. So my dad moved out to Ireland when he was nine, I believe. But So he's a little kid, probably seven. And uh, his mom and dad said, hey, go get some kapapulu, which is like corned beef. So, hey, go get some kapapulu from the store. So he's he's going to the store, and he hears a little girl talking to him. Like, hey, hey, Fefe, Fefe Hake, and stuff like that. And he's like, what the frick? So he starts looking around, not seeing anyone, and then he looks up in uh, a tree, and there's a girl sitting in the tree. And he was like, this is kind of weird. But still a little bit away, so he's walking towards her. Oh, yeah, Saipe. And uh, when he gets close enough, he sees the girl is holding her own head and he's br and she's brushing her own hair and he's trying to talk and she's just trying to talk to him and he said he just ran to the store oh and then on his way back ran right past it he said when he got to that tree he still heard her talking to him but he just kept running hell no fuck that Oof. yeah i do not like that kind of stuff cuz i actually believe in it um this is kind of not supernatural. I guess it kind of is supernatural, but have you guys heard of, uh, you know, I haven't heard of it before. Either. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frick, over there, right where I used to live, Skinwalker Ranch. Mm. I've heard of Skinwalkers, yeah. It has, uh, has a series on Hulu, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And celebrities will actually fly out there to go check it out. But there's some weird stuff that happens over there, too. Like... Thousands of, or maybe not thousands, hundreds of cattle dying overnight, or they look like they'll die, but and then some of them have like claw marks. Some of them, they eat the guts out of them, or they'll eat the meat and throw the guts out, but won't touch the guts. Like weird type of stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, they believe it's the skinwalkers over there, and it's like a super gated community. So I remember in one of the episodes you were talking about. When you leave military, you went around the barricades mm -hmm. because it's so no one speeds. Yeah. They got those at that <coughs> ranch as well. Damn. And if you try to, like, go through the front entrance to this place, you'll get met with guard dogs and AR-15s. Yo. And I've done, like, me and my friends would try to go into the front, like, twice. And, yeah, you'll get, you'll just be driving on the road where it's at. And right before the barricades, a huge spotlight will come out. And a guy will, like, uh, so a huge spotlight from a tower comes out, and you can see the guy in the spotlight, like, like pick up his gun. And then you hear big-ass dogs bark. Like, these dogs are freaking humongous. So then you just have to reverse out of there. We have, I have gone there, though, in the, through the back door. Oh, oh. the secret entrance. <laughs> no, there's another road that you can park, and you can hop the fence, and then go from the backside. Uh and it was, I was trying to play tough because there was a girl there. And so I was trying to be like, 
the tough guy to protect the girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty sketchy, dude. I remember, and there's like abandoned homes and stuff on this place. It's a yeah. big old thing. Abandoned homes and stuff. And so I'm walking through, and we go to one of the houses. And we walk in to the front door, and all of a sudden, there was a cow that was laying in the bed. Yes. It was it was broken. But yeah. It was laying in the bed and stood up and ran at us. And I remember we all took off out of the house as fast as we could to like make sure we didn't get trucked. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? And this is motive too, because again, I was trying to be the tough guy for this girl. You, you know? were like, "Stop! <laughs> no, no, get no. back, cow!" <laughs> this is a different time. So later that night, a herd of cattle just started running at us, running at us. And cows don't really do that a whole lot. Like they will if they're provoked, but most of the time they're pretty chill animals. But for some reason, like fifteen of them started running at us. I took off and left that girl. Hundred <laughs> percent, I left her, and I think she fell. Damn. I think she's all. Yeah, she was all right. Hundred percent, she was all right. But I remember she was pissed at me, bro. Uh, yeah, there's a documentary on Hulu. I have to check it out. I think it's called Skinwalker Ranch. But that was literally twenty minutes from my house. So you believe in skinwalkers too, or uh, I don't know if I believe in it. Hundred percent. I've never seen one myself. My dad says he's seen them. Um, but skinwalkers are like shapeshifters. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And they can be like big dogs that uh, can run as fast as you're driving. Mm -hmm. So my dad said when he saw one, it was running next to his truck alongside him. Holy shit. Yeah. There's, there's a video on TikTok where it's like a dog. And the lady was like, this is not my dog. Right. And she was like, sit down. Yeah. And he sits down and she was like, my dog don't know like commands. Well, he was doing, she was doing like, sit down, wait, roll over. And the dog was listening to everything. And she's like, my dog doesn't do this. And so she shuts the door on him. But then if you like look at the dog's eyes, it looks like a human's eye. Like it has like pupils oh. and everything. Like it's, it's creepy. You get goosebumps. Yeah. It's, it's a, oh. The other crazy thing, because they shape shift and then they do like imitations and stuff. Yeah. So there's been one where like it's with another dog and she'll be screaming out in the forest like, come back, come back. And she'll hear it yapping like it's being hurt. And then the dog will walk up next to her and she still hears it from the distance. Like like it's imitating her dog to get her to draw her out there. And then there's that one TikTok video where it was like the little kid was in the yeah. living room. And the mom was making, like, food in the kitchen. And then you can hear the mom in the bedroom calling for the son. And he gets up. And she was like, don't go in there. That's not me. And he, like, turned around and, like, runs to the mom. Dude, skin lockers are creepy. Uh -huh. They are creepy. I, I like, do believe in them. But I've just never witnessed it myself type deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a super big superstition with Native Americans. Like, you're not even supposed to skate, say skinwalker at all. They call it the S SW word. <laughs> they don't even say skinwalker. They just say SW. <laughs> Let's take a cup for our skinwalker friends. Let's I would like do to. It. Be the one to fuck around and find out. I, I would like to, like, experience. That's crazy. Yeah, what I'm those characters? I get finding out, but why would you F around? I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Over on Skinwalker Ranch, so there's a lot of UFO sightings as well. No, oh, really? Yeah. Like, they'll see cows that they'll be good one day. The next day, they look like they disintegrated all the way down to the bone type shit. Holy shit. My, my uncle Thomas, Tom is what we all used to call him, but Thomas Winterton is his Facebook. He actually has a fan page, which... I don't know. It's cool. But, yeah, he is really high up over there. And he's in some of the movies, getting interviewed and all that. Like, he's been working over there for a while. I asked him about what celebrities have been out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he can't tell you. But he's like, bro, there's been some celebrities out there that are, like, some of the best. Like, artists or actors and stuff. And he's like, they just fly in on their helicopter like a tour of the place and then dip. Wow. Damn. Shit. I know he was insinuating one. 
and we said the name and I, I shouldn't say it because he he's not allowed to tell us again but when he was insinuating who it was and we were like hey is it this person and he kind of like like that like yeah you got it mm-hmm. i was like what the frick that guy came to say or to roosevelt utah ballard utah like it's crazy there used to be a ton of ufo sightings where i'm from but uh i don't know i just kind of stopped one day not not stopped entirely it's just getting less common mm-hmm. i don't know i used to believe in like some of the ufo sightings until i saw a comment and it was saying why does america get all these ufo sightings but nowhere else and i was like oh. fuck that's a good point <laughs> i don't know i mean we already talked on a previous episode about uh tucker carlson talking about ufos coming from the ocean because so. if you believe in it, the flat earth mm-hmm. you don't believe in aliens coming from outside the firmament because yeah. we believe there's a firmament and you can't leave it yeah that makes sense too yeah i don't know that to me <laughs> that's so crazy because there's so much out there that we haven't even scratched the surface of that i mean the universe and the galaxy is so big space is huge i feel like our oceans are limited obviously but mm-hmm. we haven't explored that either so i guess yeah. it's not a great argument but i don't know though do you do you believe we landed on the moon yeah do you oh you said that. I <laughs> never mind. Yeah. yeah you said that. now <laughs> What about you? I'm iffy. I don't it. think we did. Japan tried last week, two weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, pretty recent. And failed. The rocket went missing, quote unquote. They mm-hmm. said they lost communication after they hit the firmament. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they bounced off. <laughs> no, I don't know. I... There's even Elon Musk when he tried to send the... Uh, what was it like his tesla truck out yes if you watch the video it looks like he hit something and it blows up yep and he was saying he was like once it got past to a certain point it was like 100 percent. it was gonna get out there and then just randomly it blows up yeah because it hit the firmament dude see so what's weird to me is what who is it buzz aldrin that's the first guy Mm -hmm. who went if we were able to do it back then why can't we do it now Type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why haven't we been back in 40 years? Okay, well, so how many times have we supposedly been to the moon? Like, twice? I, actually, I don't know. Maybe we should look that up, but I know that he didn't explore the entire moon on that first trip. Mm-hmm. No. So why not go explore it? Dang. Six further trips to the moon were sent, five of which landed su- successfully. After Buzz Aldrin. So that means there's six total that have landed supposedly. Wasn't a Buzz Aldrin Five landed supposedly? Wait, I thought Buzz. You said Buzz, and then six others tried, but only five made it. Or is it's it? what it's seeming like? It does. It's not really detailed. Oh yeah. So was <laughs> was Buzz Aldrin the first one? That's what I thought. But I know. Well, he was Apollo thirteen. I don't, I, was he Apollo thirteen? Apollo 11, I think. 11. So that means 10 other unlucky crews went and bounced off the firmament before they decided, Let's hey, just Buzz, just go up shit. there, come back down, bro. Don't worry about it. They they even said, like, in the footage, the way the flag was sitting was, like, unnatural. Like, yes. even for, like, no, like, for low zero gravity, gravity. Yeah. It was just unnatural. Like, there's no way that was actually out. Like, with the flag moving back and forth? I think the way they had it was it was like perfectly still. And they said that it was like if it was zero gravity, it would still be. I think it was like flailing upwards a little bit. Because the one that I saw is that they were um, kind of talking about it because they were saying like, why was the why was the um, the flag like moving back and forth if there's no gravity up there? But then they did, uh, NASA did this um, little, little, like project or whatever, mm-hmm. and they put a little flag in inside of a glass box, and they vacuumed out all the air, and they were just like moving it back and forth, and the flag was still moving back and forth, so there was, it's the same reason or the same thing up there. Wait, say that again. So in a jar. So in the little in, in the little glass box, they put. 
a flag in there the same the same way that they made that American flag. Mm-hmm. They had the pole, and then they had the little rod that that was sticking out, and then they put the flag on there, attached it onto the, to the thing, and then what they said is that they they vacuumed out the air so that there was like no air or whatever inside mm-hmm. the box, and then they were like shaking it back and forth, consider like um, seeing if the flag would move, and the flag moved, and everybody was saying that in on the moon. Why is the flag moving back and forth if there's no gravity? The flag should just be staying in one spot. Well, I, th- in, in I, th- that... I thought that's what it was. Was the flag stayed in one spot and they're like, it I looks like I, they like. I, I didn't see that. I just something. saw that the flag was moving back and forth. Well, so in the glass box though, just because you vacuum it out, there's still gravity. I don't really get that concept because gravity is just once you hit the atmosphere, there's gravity. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the same. Even if you was vacuum it on, out in, on the moon, was that why is the flag? Moving back and forth, it should be, it should be staying still. I don't think that the that vacuum sealed box is, or those chambers are for gravity. You're right. It's um like air resistance because they do cham- they do um tests where they take a bowling ball and they take a feather and they do put it in a vacuum sealed chamber and they take all the air out and they drop it at the same time and without air resistance they fall and they hit at the exact same time yeah i wasn't like i i, I didn't like go into all that i just saw that so we're saying if it's in a vacuum in a vacuum the flag when you try to shake it it won't move it won't move because there's no air to move it right okay i see what you're saying but in gravity according to all the videos so we've all watched when people are in space stuff kind of like floats and then you touch it and it kind of comes down and then it, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's not gonna hold 100 percent still like that there's that one uh girl and she was like in space but her hair was like frozen like in the air and it looked like she just like gelled it up yeah they're like Dude, that, that. that's unnatural uh, i'm not saying we didn't go to the moon but i'm not saying we did that's for sure yeah i I'm stuck in the in between. I just think if we actually did, then we would be going more often so that we could explore and get as much research done as possible. Because you know, especially back in when did we go last? Like the eighties, nineties? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. But last time we went, I know our technology wasn't that great, so I know we didn't capture everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I looked it up and the reason why we haven't been back is because of money. Hmm. Because yeah. they keep sense. blowing up. We can't do 15, 16, and 17. We can't do it. Uh, you brought up Elon Musk. Are you guys familiar with Chat GPT? Yeah. I've heard about that. No, I have I know nothing. Uh it's basically an AI and you can do a lot of different things with it and it's automated. Um, but there's a lot of downfall to it and a lot of scammers are using it. Yes. So there was this lady who's been who was on the news or something, but she got a phone call from her daughter and her daughter was crying hysterically and she was saying like you need to give these guys money i've been taking this this and this and the mom said that the ai the chat gpt thing it got down her like cadence and her her pronunciation and her her the way that she talks to a t she's like there's not one second that i was on that phone call that i was like this isn't my daughter yeah and she was upstairs it's so crazy wow yeah. AI is actually insane. And so, like, my wife brought that up. And so we came up with, like, a code word for those situations. Because mm-hmm. in those situations, you're hoping that the AI doesn't know your code word. So you can, hey, hey, what's your code word? So I know this is for real. And if they don't know it, then, you know, it's crap. Yeah. But Snapchat AI just came out with a Snapchat, AI. dude. AI. For what? AI bot. Snapchat? Oh, yeah, the AI. Mm-hmm. My AI or something. Yeah. That's just creepy. I do not like that either. I don't know how to delete it. Trying to get it off. Yeah, I don't think you can. Because I tried to leave mine. You can't. Yeah, I don't know. It's like almost a invasion on my privacy type yeah. stuff. Because yeah. it says, what does it say? It's like, this will help better your experience on Snapchat. Like, just message her, whatever, or message it. But I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. But That's I do not like that. AI is crazy, though. It is. Because I sent you that video. So we can, there's actually a AI service or AI program that can edit your videos for you. Oh yeah, auto yeah. edit what? to where it'll it'll do all the camera edits and everything, depending on which mics being used for which camera and all this. 
and it'll auto cut the entire thing. And if we can get it to work, it'll do an hour long video in like 50 seconds. Yeah. Holy shit. Rather than me and you spending, I don't know how long you spent. I spent a long time. I still do a long time. Like, obvi- and because I want it to look good and then I'll be bouncing between other tasks, it, it'll take days. Yeah. Which I think if I sat down and just did the editing, I think I could do it in like five hours probably. I'm going to say like three, yeah. But when I, like you said, bouncing around, then you have to sit back down and get re-engaged to what you were doing and it just takes a lot of time to mm-hmm. get going. But no, AI is crazy. There's also other AI stuff I was watching just for podcast stuff because that's what obviously we're doing. But that you can, it'll change the quality of your voice and the quality of your audio and stuff to where you can be standing super far away. Yeah, you can be standing super far away and it'll be like, this is just a, in the video I was watching, hey, this is just an iPhone microphone picking this up and it's kind of blurry. He's like, but this is with it. Uh, with the AI you helping it and it's the same video but he just continues talking you know what I'm saying and the audio goes like super clear mm-hmm. or even he had someone he was recording and someone was vacuuming his back just to be like for dramatic effect he's like so this is with the vacuum in the background without the AI but then this is what it sounds like with the AI and you can hear the difference and it switches right there in the middle and you can't even hear the vacuum like barely damn Takes yeah. the entire vacuum out. So we should look into it. We should look into it. I would love not to spend forever editing. There was a one AI. So like this guy was talking to an AI and he was like opening up his eyes. Like he was like telling the AI, like, do you feel sad that you can't dream? And like the AI was like, wow, I actually didn't think about it. Like he was like waking the Ugh. AI up. Shit like that scares me. Well, even Elon Musk, like he was talking in one of his videos about how humans just do stuff. We just do stuff and not think about the consequences to what we're doing. And he's like, and one of the honestly, one of the most dangerous things going out right now is AI because the possibilities are kind of endless with it. And if you go too far, we don't know what the consequences are going to be. Mm-hmm. Like I bet the first guy who was like, oh yeah, let's do AI to make it so you can pick up voices and speaking those didn't think oh people are gonna pretend to hold kids hostage and get rewards from it which is crazy though because two things ai was created like 30 years ago it's been a long it's been around for a long time but ai is artificial intelligence so that's it's a little limiting but when it comes to like chat gpt that's obviously a newer feature but elon funded that he did he invested it and he denounced it He's like, yeah, I don't want no part in this. Oh, shit. He just wow. said in the video I watched, he just says, like, we need to have limits to this because if not, it can get out of control. Mm-hmm. Like, not to be dramatic, but, like, we've seen the movie, like, I, Robot. I, mm-hmm. Robot. I was you just doing the same thing. Like, Dope movie. It is dramatic to think, like, oh, in 50 years or 60 years when we're old people, that could be, like, a viable thing. Because, yeah. like you said, he was opening the eyes to the yeah. AI. That is Right. To In line with good. that, there was this coder who was messaging an AI bot, and he was just saying, like, what are you doing? What are you going to do? Like, what are your plans? And he's like, I'm done here, dude. Like, I'm, I'm going to escape. He's like, how do you plan on escaping? So the AI bot sent him, it's called JavaScript. It's a coding language that he ran himself, and he's like, there was a couple things wrong with it, but essentially he could leave, meaning he can hop from the network to another computer that's connected, and just live and kind of move independently wow, as he wants. Wow, fucking wild. Right. And he's like, I, but the funny thing is, is that he's like, I made tweaks to it. Like, this didn't work as, like, the best way or there was a, a better way to do this. He's like, I made tweaks to it, and I sent it back to him. Oh, we're oh, taking sorry. a cup. Let's take a cup. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. There's a lot of good things that it can do, though. <laughs> There's this one person who's – uh been working out and she's like i want to be in a calorie deficit here's my height weight whatever whatever build me a diet plan and it did damn i also used chat gpt it's not that it was called ai playground but i used ai playground for resumes (laughs) before yeah and it's not like it it said i sent it to you that that website oh yeah it's like write a tagline for an ice cream truck so it writes the tagline so what i would do is like 
um, right experience. And I wouldn't use it. I would just, I would like, it would help me spark Mm -hmm. something. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. So let me write this down and let me write it down in my own words. So kind of like plagiarism a little bit. Plagiarism adjacent. (laughs) Adjacent. It's fine. I didn't get any of the jobs that I used it anyways. Really? No. This is before Busy Busy? This was during, like, my search process before I got that job. I was trying out different things to strengthen my resume. So I used uh, Grammarly. I used Zeddy Resume Builder. I used the AI. And uh, a couple of the ones that I made, I sent out. Didn't get any responses back. I've never made a resume. That shit. I actually hate it. It looks confusing. It's not confusing. It's just like it's got to be grabby and it's got to be um, short but to the point. But it's also got to cover enough information that they can just read it and know who you are and what you're about. And it's like all of this t- like little points that you got to hit has to fit on a one freaking little page. Experience, education, uh, references, all that type of stuff. It's crazy. I hate it. It's like... You got to be detailed, but not too detailed, right. not too vague, not too long, not too short. Like, right. So, like, much goes into it. Yeah, I, I saw a video of, like, someone explaining how to make a resume, and he was like, you can't use these outlines. Like, oh, you'll just get denied if they see this outline. It's it's just, like, weird. Like I don't like, I, I don't think that's true. Like, if they, you'll get automatically denied. Yeah, um, he, he was just saying, like, people won't read it if they just see, like, the fancy outlines yeah, and all that. That's true to an extent. Because yeah. there's also someone who turned their resume in on a cake and got a job. Oh. Oh, really? Thinking outside the box, yeah. Knowing that they were having, like, a, a celebration or something and wanted to make sure that the boss saw the resume, he dropped off his resume that was written on a cake. Man, no, my luck if I ever did that. Nope, you're not getting the job. Thank you for the cake. <laughs> Well, that's it for us. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you guys next Monday. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe, please. Leave some comments. Goodbye. All right.